from the top of the Puerto del Sol in Malaga. Welcome to the GCN Show. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show. This week, we've got an exclusive interview with Matty Van der Poel. I know, it's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? It's almost like proper journalism, but not quite. It is still GCN. Anyway, we pitched 19 questions to him that we have been desperate to ask, including this one. Who is better, you or Wat van Aert? Yikes. We've also got a new Guinness World Record, cycling to give birth, which puts a whole new meaning to an interval session, and a new competition for you. And yes, I am flying solo once again. This week, Dan appears to still be catching up on important life admin. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that track racing is not for the faint-hearted. This little bit of argy-bargy happened at about 80 kilometers per hour. Yes, the UCI Track Champions League at the weekend, definitely not short on action. Now, we also learned this week just what would happen if a bike wheel and an air purifier had a baby. Now, this is not a question that I had ever asked before, but one answered anyway by Kristin Tapping, the inventor of Go Rollo, which is literally a bike wheel with a built-in air purifier. The idea being that it cleans the air as you cycle along. Now, personally, I can't help but feel that this might not exactly be the answer to the world's problems, but it is cool tech, nevertheless. Now, as you might have seen a couple of weeks ago, Dan and I were out in Mallorca filming the top secret Zwift Academy finals, which will be here on GCN starting on December the 15th. Now, I cannot wait for you all to see it. It is gonna be absolutely epic. We'll give you more information on it nearer the time, of course, but put a note in your diaries for now. Anyway, while we were there in Mallorca, we also learned that Matthew van der Poel doesn't go training in the rain. And we learned this because we found him doing a three hour Zwift ride instead. And so we ambushed him just whilst he was descending out the Zwift and then made him answer our burning questions. We're in, we're next to Matthew van der Poel and he can't go anywhere. So we've got <laughs> 19 pretty bad questions that we've come up with in the last minute or so. Uh, number one, Matthew, favorite race? Uh, Tour of Flanders. Tour of Flanders. That actually answers a question that came later on Flanders or Roubaix. Flanders. Uh, <laughs> cycling caps peak up or peak down? Um, peak down. Peak down. Sometimes, sometimes peak up. That's yes. a good answer, but Cy Richardson's not going to be happy <laughs> about that. Uh, do you obsess about aerodynamics, drivetrain efficiency, and tyre pressures, or do you just shut up and ride? A little bit, but I focus more on riding than on the rest. I thought that might be the answer. Uh, white shorts or black shorts? Depends on the kit, of course. But, uh, when you are a national champion or white, a world champion? White, white World shorts? champion, it's difficult, but then it's completely white. But uh, national champion, for sure, the white shorts. Tough choices you have to make. <laughs> uh, number five, if you could only do cyclocross, mountain biking or road racing, which would it be? That's a really difficult question. I think mountain biking. Whoa, not what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, beer or wine? Wine. Leg warmers over or under your socks? Over now. It used to be under, but it's over now. Why did you change? <laughs> uh, good question. I don't know, I just... Okay, you don't have to have a reason. <laughs> uh, are you considering racing the Gravel World Championships? Yes. Will you win it? I don't know, I've never done a gravel <laughs> race, so... Uh, what was your best day ever on a bike? Best day ever on a bike? Oh. Um. There's a lot to choose from, I know. I think maybe the final of Amstel was one of my best finals. Yeah, maybe not the best day on a bike, but the best last 30k of a race for sure. An understandable answer. Uh, your worst ever day on a bike? I've had quite a few already. <laughs> um, for example, two years ago, Strade Bianchi was uh, really bad. Yep. Uh, okay, almost there. How many Tours de France will Pogaccia win? 
He can break the record, I think. Really? Yeah. Confidence in Pogaccia. Uh, short high intensity intervals or long steady endurance ride? Uh, it depends. If it's good weather, I like the long, long rides, but if it's raining, uh, I can enjoy some uh, intervals on Swift as Get well. Get it out of the way. Uh, which race would you most like to win that you haven't already? Will be. What keeps... Oh, did, I, uh, did I win already or? No, you haven't won. I oh, haven't, yeah, Ruby. Harry Roubaix. Yeah. Uh, what keeps you awake at night? Not much. <laughs> Quite relaxed. Yes. Uh, what motivates you? Uh, winning. You must be very motivated then. <laughs> uh, I think three to go. Who is better, you or Wat Van Aert? I leave it in the middle. <laughs> Who's the fastest sprinter out of Mark Cavendish or the man just over there, Tim Malia? Tim. Tim. And finally, who is your favourite GCN presenter? You. Do you know my name? Daniel. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sai, who's just over there, is incredibly disappointed. Oh, I, I didn't notice him. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Vanderpool there, formerly my favourite professional cyclist. Uh, no, I jest. The guy is a total legend. If you're ever worried about meeting your heroes in real life, you needn't be with MVDP. Uh, some pretty contentious answers, though. I think you'll all agree. I mean, what do you think? Peak up or peak down? It's a question that um, well, we can never seem to find the right answer for. And also, has anything surprised you from his answers? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, it's GCN inspiration time now, that part of the show where we pick out our three favourite photos or videos that you've been uploading onto the GCN app that make us want to go ride our bikes. Now, all three will win a prize in third place this week, winning a GCN Ember Fade Ass Saver, plus a core red mug is Mark NZ with this absolutely cracking photograph uh, taken in the Mackenzie district, South Island, New Zealand. Uh, he said, I took this picture whilst working away. I wish I'd brought my bike. No idea who's riding uh, in this picture, but if I win something on GCN Inspiration, I'll owe it to them. And yes, if you look closely, there is a very small, two very small bike riders, or one very small bike rider, and a signpost. I can't quite work it out, but, um, but yeah, that looks absolutely majestic, doesn't it? Inspired, totally. Right, second place this week, winning a GCN shadow stand and a core blue sweatshirt is this one from Doug Sarto. Whoa, I like your style with that photograph. A misty autumn day heading up the long climb from Killin to Glen Ogle Head in Perthshire, Scotland. Hashtag gravel. There we go. Uh, they've also said hashtag double track, but I'm pretty sure there's three tracks there. Yeah, I don't want to be pedantic, but you know. Um, anyway, that is super cool. That is an awesome shot. Uh, I like your bar tape as well, very stylish. Uh, right, and then in first place, winning a GCN Epic Climb Sacalobra t-shirt and a GCN Classic Zip hoodie and a maintenance book, oh my word, big prize this week, is this one from Makali Siuri. Riding in the morning hour across the Carpathian Mountains in Western Ukraine is a bit chilly, but always amazing. That picture is Wicked. I'm not going to lie, that is utterly awesome. And yes, that does make you want to go and ride your bike. It makes you want to get up early, fortunately not so early, currently in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, sunrise, I believe, is about 7.47 in, uh, in Bristol at the moment. Um, but look at that. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? I tell you what, I could look at that all day. I won't. We will move on. But, um, but yeah, congratulations to all three of you. Um, right. If you want to get involved on GCN Inspiration, just keep uploading your cool photos and videos to the GCN app and we'll pick out our winners next week. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with news of a new Guinness World Record for the largest GPS drawing slash Strava art completed in 12 hours. Now that is a record that I did not know existed, but uh, there you go. Anyway, the holder is now Anthony Hoyt for this mustachioed 72 mile long hipster on the streets of London, which is very cool. Uh, I do wonder how complicated the image needs to be to qualify for this, because I reckon we've got some riders here at GCN that could go the distance 
I just don't hold out much hope for Hank or Connor's drawing ability. Uh, anyway, next up, we have got some racing news. Lifetime Events, which is a big promoter based in the US, have just announced a new series for elite riders with a massive quarter of a million dollar prize purse. And coolly, if that's a word, spans both gravel and mountain bike. So it links up six of their blue ribbon events like Unbound, Big Sugar, and the Leadville 100, and it's gonna be known as the Lifetime Grand Prix. Now, speaking of prize funds, the prestigious Belgian one-day race, Nocera Cursa, has announced that it will be increasing the size of the prize fund of the women's race so that it equals the men's. And in doing that, it now makes it the richest women's one-day race in the calendar. So nice work, Nocera Cursa organizers. Also nice work, Julianne Genter, the New Zealand politician who almost unbelievably cycled to hospital to give birth just an hour later. Her contractions apparently were two to three minutes long and increased in intensity towards the end of her ride, which sounds to me like a solid training session. Anyway, as if you needed any more evidence that cycling has the power to save the world, Forbes reported last week that tripling the level of cycling in London here in the UK would result in an annual six and a half billion dollar dividend through health, productivity, and environmental factors. Now, the research company Transport for Quality of Life created a report for the Bicycle Association and comes at a delicate time for transport policy in the UK's capital because money is tight and local councils are currently buckling under anti-cycling infrastructure pressure. So, as always, folks, make your voices heard to your local representatives, not just on social media. And yes, that applies in London here in the UK, but globally as well. Okay, folks, it's competition time now. Just let me get the prize on the table. <sighs> With guns like this, any task. Seems easy. Uh, now, Orica, who are a Spanish smart trainer company, who you might remember from featuring in our Sprinter Beginner Amateur versus Pro video that went out a couple of weeks ago, where Oli and the guys used their O5 trainer, which has got that lateral movement you'll remember. Now, this one, though, is, as you can see, their O7 model, which is brand spanking new. I mean, literally just released. And we have got one to give away. It is smaller and lighter than the O5. It doesn't have that same lateral movement, but like its bigger brother, it also doesn't need to be plugged into the mains. Yeah, how cool is that? So it generates its own power, or more specifically, you generate its own power as you pedal along, and that unlocks all of the smart functionality. Now, despite being smaller and lighter than the O5, it can still generate resistance to simulate gradients of up to 25%, which seems plenty steep enough in my book, and it can handle up to two and a half thousand watts, which is very useful for me, I can tell you that. Uh, me and two of my friends riding on a tandem, because uh, if you remember, Hank and I, couldn't quite do it on a normal tandem. But uh, anyway, there we go. If you want to enter the competition, and I suggest you do, then click on the link in the description beneath this video. And we've got results for you as well. Results from the Seller Italia competition that we ran a couple of weeks ago. And the lucky winners are Tomas Vidonia and Villaroel Elice Andrea. So uh, there you go, congratulations to you two, and uh, you can thank me in the comments for pronouncing your names perfectly. Apologies. <laughs> it's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week, and we're gonna start with uh, this one from ALV3SM, bike rack, Iowa style. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what more can you say? Uh, a field of corn being used to prop up two very nice looking bikes there. Um, well, yeah, I think I'm going to say that's a hack, really. What more can you ask for? An environmentally friendly, sustainable bike rack uh, that you can eat when you're finished with it. 82% um, of you lot say that's a hack as well, which um, is surprisingly generous, because uh, normally you, uh, you lot don't seem to be particularly taken with, uh, with things like that, but there we go. Uh, it's, a, it's a hack. We're starting off as we mean to go on. Uh, next up, we've got this one from Tim. Tell you what, you got in early, didn't you, Tim? That, how's that for a username? Awesome. Uh, Built-in U-lock holder. I like it. Uh, finally found a use for cross brakes, holding my U-lock. I never use the levers anyway, and the lock doesn't get in the way of my lights. Well, I tell you what, that's quite ingenious, isn't it? As long as it doesn't rattle, 
Uh, but uh, but there we go. I, get, mm, I was about to say I'm going to give it a hack, but I mean it is fairly rudimentary, isn't it? 64% of you lot said it's a bodge. Uh, right then, next up we've got this one from Heil K, which is road bike to the extreme. Uh, saw this at work where we park our bicycles. Looks like this person thought that road cycling is not extreme enough or just wants to lift a mate. Anyway, I thought it was worth posting. It is worth posting. Thank you very much. Um, now, for those of you that aren't quite as extreme as, uh, as me, um, let me just tell you, those are stunt pegs uh, or trick nuts, I believe they used to be called 20 odd years ago. Um, so uh, you can do things like grinds on your BMX um, or on your road bike. Honestly, I don't know whether that would actually function. It looks mildly terrifying, um, particularly with that slender looking wheel. Um, yeah, rather you than me giving someone a lift on a road bike like that. But um, hey, I mean, it doesn't look to be broken yet, so I guess it's functioning. Um, anyway, I'm going to say bodge, 100%. 81% um, of you lot say it's a bodge as well, which is fairly comprehensive bodging, I think. Uh, next, we got this one from Michael EF, which is, or Michael Leff, sorry. Suspended bike stand from work table. I don't have any room in my work area for a bike stand, so I suspended the bike and attached the fork to a fork holder on the table with two bungee cords to hold it in place. There we go. That's quite cool, isn't it? Because, yeah, you can, you can work on your gears, you can do some indexing. You only thing you can't really do, I guess, is much at the front end because it looks fairly snug against the wall. But uh, but I like that. I oh, what am I going to say? Oh. I mean, you might want to think about moving that fork mounting back a little bit. But um, I'm going to give it a hack. I know, feeling generous today. But no, there you go. Uh, only 42% of you lot said that was a hack. So. Uh, yeah, it seems a bit, a bit harsh, but there we go. Um, and then last, we've got this one from Animal Land, which is a simple chain holder for quick linking. Sounds intriguing. Uh, I like this better than the bent spoke trick. The pins hold the chain at the right separation against the tension of the derailleur springs, so you can fit a quick link and or adjust new chain length correctly if you're planning to rivet the chain. Well, I mean, it does look nice. I'm not entirely sure I need one. In fact, I don't think I've ever needed one for putting a quick link back together. The whole point is quick links are so easy, but um, well, I don't know, I'm torn. It looks good, but it's kind of a bit pointless. 77% um, of you lot said hack, so uh, maybe it's not pointless. Um, oh, I'm on the fence with this. I think I'm gonna say bodge, actually. I'm gonna to stick to my principles. I don't know why you need one, um, but uh, the fact that 77% of you lot said hack means it's probably pretty decent. Um, I, of course, would have said hack had some bit of it been 3D printed. Uh, then it would have been an absolute shoe in. Uh, anyway, there we go. That is hack or bodge for this week. Please keep your hacks and bodges coming in on the GCN app. Love looking through them uh, at random times during the week as well as during the GCN show. And, uh, and next week, Dan will be here to add his acerbic wit into the equation again as well. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Pretty sure it's time for that zip tie to go. It has been irritating me now for several weeks. Uh, we will, as always, start with results from last week where we gave you this photo of Ellie Isabit looking like he's struggling a little bit with that enormous novelty-sized, um, well, bowl of Quermont beer. Um, Lloydy looks at that photo and scoffs. Ah. Anyway, cracking caption from Shimano6001, who said, uh, Ellie really knows his beer. And uh, yes, that's nose, N-O-E-S. Probably need to see it written down. But uh, anyway, I like that one. So congratulations, a GCN Elite water bottle is coming your way, minus the zip tie. Uh, right then, this week's photo, another cyclocross one, is of Magali Rochette on her way to a fantastic second place at the recent round of the Cyclocross World Cup in Besançon. A career best for her, in fact, in Europe. Anyway, uh, this photo reminded me of, um, well, I would say a Mark Twain quote, but I've since Googling it realized it's not Mark Twain. Um, anyway, much like golf, cyclocross is often a good walk spoiled. No, not doing it for you? Come on, you're a tough crowd this week, aren't you? Um, well, 
as I just said, Lloydy will be back next week with his acerbic wit. Um, in the meantime, the barrier for entry is low, so get involved, stick your captions in the comment section down below. The funniest will win a GCN Elite water bottle. So, um, so yeah, get your captions coming in. I mean, it does look like she's walking, doesn't it? So hence why. Golf is a good walk spoiled. And then, much like golf, cycle across is a good walk spoiled. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's move on. Comments of the week now. You have, as always, been leaving some brilliant comments under our videos from the past seven days. I'm going to read out some of the very best, starting with a couple that were left under the All Road versus Gravel video. It's Mark said, uh, I haven't seen Alex celebrate a win that ecstatically since he beat Connor's boy at racing sticks in a stream. And go. Go. Chuck your stick, quick, that's it. Oh, they're gone. Oh, they're gone. Who's won? That was me, it was, it was me. Alex won. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and also David van der Wundt, uh, put his finger on it, really. Um, you know you're a full blast bike nerd when your idea of illicit fun is taking a bike with subtly unsuitable geometry and slightly too slick tires down a muddy track. Uh, yes, busted. Guilty as charged, David. Um, I mean, I kind of didn't mean illicit in the, you know, like, um, no, who am I kidding? I've got no way out of that one, have I? Uh, anyway, do check that video out if you haven't already. There was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good fun one to film. So uh, I, even though I lost, I had a good, good time doing that one. Um, anyway, under Freddy's 312 video, so that was uh, Freddy, our beginner, who unbelievably tackled the Mallorca 312 after seven weeks of a structured training plan. Um, anyway, it really struck a chord with a lot of you lot's incredible comments, basically saying, Freddie is amazing, and Ollie is too, actually. It, you've got to check that video out if you haven't already. Um, Vanilla Birding said, Freddie is such an inspiring person, and him and Ollie are nothing but a dream team. Kind of makes me want to do the same. And then Owen Johnson, just underneath, I'm currently struggling with depression. Cycling is one thing that is definitely helping. Thank you, Freddie, for sharing your story, and a big hearty congrats on finishing this ride. Uh, and I'm really thankful that Ollie was with you for the entire event. That was great teamwork. I was in tears at the end. So yeah, honestly, do check that video out. It's, it's brilliant. Um, and uh, Freddie did fantastically well. What more can I say? Uh, then uh, under the Shimano Experience Center, slightly different vibe. Uh, Alex basically just nerding out in a Shimano theme park. Xavier Hussain said, no wonder there's a global part shortage if Shimano are slicing everything in half, uh, which made me chuckle. Um, there are some interesting exploded components in there. Um, probably another one for the nerds. Um, some illicit thrills for all of us. Uh, and then lastly, under Can You Drop Ollie, which, which is a brilliant vid, you've got to check that one out too. Um, Strawhorn1 said, I couldn't even drop Contador, let alone Ollie. It's Ollie and my fellow Invernessian, the legend that is Jenny Graham, that's inspired me to push harder on all aspects of cycling and most importantly, doing it with a smile. So uh, yeah, fair play Ollie for doing that video. Uh, well. What more can you say? He's a great lad. And also, he set quite the bar for that one. Um, if you think you can drop him, and even if you don't, you just fancy giving it a go, then, uh, then Ruvi have kindly supplied a 28-day free trial so that you can get stuck in and race Ollie up uh, quite a brutal Swiss coal. So, uh, so do check it out. Uh, right then, what's coming up on GCN over the next seven days? On Wednesday, we've got how to choose cycling shoes. On Thursday, how to fix sore wrists from riding, which is a common complaint, isn't it? So, uh, so yeah, definitely check that one out. On Friday, it's, uh, well, we're trying to explain why we took a bit of a hammering at the Zwift Racing League this year. So, um, cue lots of excuses, and then also, uh, a bit of a look at our uh, semi-triumphant final round. So hopefully that'll be a bit of fun for you. Uh, and then on Saturday, can we break carbon fiber wheels? Uh, or specifically, can Alex Payton break carbon fiber wheels with Ollie's help? Tune in on Saturday to know the answer. And then on Sunday, it's Hank's dad versus Sacalobra. So Hank raced his dad on an e-bike up Sacalobra, and this is the video of what happened. And uh, well, you've got to check that one out as well. 
If I sound like a stuck record here, by the way, it's just because there's been some really good videos out over the last week or so, and that one is also going to be a banger. Okay, two more points of business before I leave you for this week. Firstly, it's a reminder for you to tune in to Cyclocross over on GCM+. Plus. This weekend, Tom Pitcock and Wout Van Aert are back in action. So they are racing a condensed cyclocross season, but a very full one. And then Matthew Van Der Poel is going to be joining a couple of weeks later. But Pitcock and Wout Van Aert are going to be racing the Super Prestige race in Boehm on Saturday. So don't miss that. Mariana Voss, she comes back on the 12th of December in Val de Sol, where apparently there's going to be a snow cannon involved. So that's quite exciting, isn't it? Um, now, worth mentioning, territory restrictions do apply uh, on our racing content on GCM Plus. So do check um, that it's there where you live. And then lastly, no touch restrictions apply for the GCM Plus film this week, which is an absolute corker. It's, uh, it's Taylor Wiles and Ruth Winder riding the circle of death in the Pyrenees. And it is, uh, oh, it's one of my favorite films that we've done actually. So make sure you check it out. I don't think you'll regret it. Um, and if you do, you can just write a comment here and, um, and tell, me that, uh, tell me that I was wrong. But I'm pretty sure you won't. Okay, that is it for this week. Uh, the last one, hopefully, with me on my Larry Lonesome. Scotty no mates, whatever your turn of phrase to describe some poor individual who is stuck on their own. But uh, anyway, Lloydie is going to be back next week, so have no fear. I will see you there then too.